Um, okay, so we're gonna throw out, we do, sorry, I'm not used to having a film crew. <laughs> it's ah, I'm melting! I'm melting! It's a real home run. Before we get into today's vlog, I just wanted to let you know a little bit about what you're going to see because we really just filmed super casually throughout the few days that we were here. So where is here? So first of all, we are in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania at my friend Brianna and Michael's house. Brianna is the dyer behind the Little Wolf Knits. She's also a an incredible um, designer. She recently uh, started doing Little Wolf Knits like full time. So she is uh, there with us as we're staying in our home working dyeing, editing videos, creating patterns, doing all of this kind of stuff, kind of stuff that is, you know, for Kent and I, like totally different than what we do, but also very familiar and being a full-time business owner. Um, so we get up to some fun things, mostly eating and relaxing and knitting and crocheting and hanging out. But in the middle of this video, you're going to see us dye up a very special colorway. Kent had an idea and Brianna let him bring it to life. So I hope you enjoy this very casual vlogging video. Okay, tell us about the inspiration for, cause this is going to be a <clears throat> colorway for you that you're gonna create. Like you are the creative designer. What's that called? Producer. Creative. Director of this colorway. So tell us about your inspiration. So last week for the first time in their 63 year history. Is it really the first time ever? Yeah. Aww. The Texas Rangers won the World Series. So we're going to do a Texas Rangers uh, colorway, a little bit of gold, I hope. So red, white, red, white, and blue. Because uh, World Series trophy is gold. I don't know why I'm raising it like this, but mm -hmm. That's it's you gold. And, and you yeah, when I win the World Series myself. So the Texas Rangers they're a colors. They're also a baseball team, if, if I need to say that. 
That's important. I don't think everyone knows this. So Texas Rangers colors are blue and red and white. Yes. And depending on which uniform, there are different amounts of those colors. Yes. I was going to say, we'll put a picture here, but I'm not <laughs> editing this video. Okay. We'll put a picture here. But you want to make sure that it has the gold because that's what you get when you win. Yeah, the World so Series. their first game next year, they should have they'll have gold on their jersey. Only one game. Yeah. But you cool. win the World Series and you only get to wear gold for one game. Yeah, be a World Series champion forever. So. <laughs> the colorway name. I won the World Series. Oh, oh, one skein of yarn <laughs> for one game. I thought it was like the whole next season. No, it'll probably just be one game. Don't do that on camera. He's gonna be embarrassed. Okay, so. What we're going to do before we go downstairs is figure out what sort of style, dye style you want your colorway to have. Because you've told me you want it to have blue and red and gold. Yep, and, and white. white. But that can be a lot of different ways. So we have a lot of samples to play around and see what that looks like. So maybe starting with, let's see, these are kind of similar. So these are... Um, oh, God. Like dirty um or not dirty fuzzy a lot of my, these are all my colorways right but different like styles so you can take a look at so this is calaveras and this is a completely undyed base with a bunch of different color speckles on it that's what that looks like okay okay so it's just like confetti like funfetti cake almost so that's one option. So we could do a totally undyed and then the blue, red, and gold speckles like this. Okay. Thoughts? No. Oh. <laughs> I, that's what you were describing the other day, though. So now I'm... This is good we're doing this. Yeah. This is similar, but it has less color. So this is just three color speckles, again, on an undyed base. Similar. Yeah, I think I want more color than that. Okay. Right. So I think we're going out of there. So next option is something like this. Remember these colors are very different than the colors that you want, but see how the base of this has some color. This is like a really light peach and a gray, mm -hmm. but there's like a little bit of color, but also a lot of natural and then also speckles on top of it. So you see like here, like that one was just plain undyed, but here there's like some peachy undertones. You could do something like this, although if you're doing blue as this, it's gonna be more colorful than this, right? Because peach is like a really light color. So there's something like that where there's still a lot of undyed, but some color to the background. Yeah, no, I don't like no? this either. <laughs> wow, okay. Wait, what color this is, is a, This is a Schitt's Creek color, right? Um, this is my Boardwalk Bell tank, tank top option without the sleeve and this is always be my baby so this was inspired by their patrick and david's spoiler alert sorry in case anyone has it it's out, it's been out for a while if you haven't seen it it's your fault inspired by their wedding um okay so then i think the next option is this where the entire back there's like no natural in this right it's light colors but the entire back is dyed, and then there's one color speckle. Still too light. Still too light. Okay, so you want something like this. So this is now actually like a lot of those options in one. So see, this is like a tonal with a very light speckle. This is an almost solid background with like a few different color speckles that are kind of heavier. This is like fully variegated pretty much with speckles i kind of like like this option yeah i think that's my favorite i think so you're far. gonna like this so it's it'll be similar to really that one but it'll look a lot more colorful because you're putting blue on the base not a light peach like you can barely tell that there's peach in that so i think we do that with the blue right because when they wear a colored jersey it's solid blue yeah with like red and white lettering not yeah. the opposite so I think we do that and then red and gold speckles for sure, maybe also blue speckles in the in the white space. We can see speckles are easy to like add after. Okay. 
So we'll start there. We'll go downstairs and play around with which blue we need. Which hue. And the speckles, too. We'll, we have a lot of dye powders that we'll see which are the best representation of what's in your head. Let's do it. But this is the sort of style. This and that color back there have that similar where there is only some color poured on, a lot of natural base, and then this side on top. Yeah. This so is wait, similar. So you want, you want kind of like this, but like a darker blue, and like this would be gold, and like you want like white left in this game? Yeah. Like this? Yes. So kind of almost... Yeah, just different different sh shades of color. Yes, and so we'll look at the color chart because see this blue is very purple. It's like a periwinkle -y kind of blue. This blue is very teal, oh, like pretty. it's very green. I love this blue. Um, we'll probably not use this dye, actually. Th this is a mix of two different dyes and one of them is teal and one of them is more blue. That's what we'll probably use for the Rangers color, right? I do want to pull up a picture, actually, of their jersey so on. that I can see. There's your blue steel. So these, I used Arma acid dyes. So this is, um, again, like at a certain concentration. So it tells you at what percentage and on each colorway says, but you get a general idea of this is what this dye powder will work up as if you use it to like its intended saturation. So you could obviously use it lighter. So that blue in the other skein, let's, I'm gonna see if you can guess the blue that was in that skein. That said is a little bit more purple. Didn't you tell us it was this? No, 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 that it was navy, oh. you're right. The This lighter this one. one? Mm -hmm. Well, it kind of looks like that. Mm -hmm. Is it not? No, it's the Estelfinium. See, oh, it's a little bit more purple. Yeah. Um, but there's so many different blues. So I said, like, dark navy. What we'll probably use... Which one do you like, Kat? Yeah. Which what do you, you think, think is most Texas Ranger? One of one of these. So what have you already done so to get the I've yarn So what I've already ready? done, I prepped the yarn. I prepped okay. a few things. Okay. So in... Let's put it up a little so it doesn't hurt our backs. Okay. Bending down. Um, so I've taken... Three skeins of yarn. Okay. My sunfish base, which Ooh. is 75 25. Come see what it looks like. Spaghetti. It's bubbly. It's what? It's bubbly. Oh, yeah. I guess because of citric acid. And I also have a sock blank in there. Nice. That we'll use to play around with speckles and clean stuff. Um, but I put three skeins because that's what I do to a pan. Mm hmm. And we're going to do some fun stuff with the extra skeins, maybe. Okay. And a sock blank. So typically, I don't dye on burners because mm -hmm. that's like one pan at a time, which would take a very long time. Yes. But since we're only doing one pan, normally we'll you use, use this the for cabinet today. over here, yes. right? Yes. Normally I'm filling the cabinet, but it doesn't make sense to turn it on, waste the electricity and heat it up and all of that for a single pan. Cool. And I already did my dye day today. So, or this week. So first we'll prep the yarn and the sock blank in our pans and get it on our burner to heat up a little bit. Okay. So it can absorb the dye. All right. <laughs> All right. You look like, uh, I don't even want to say. There's so many things. You look like you could work on a farm, potentially. Uh, Sewage. <laughs> you look like you could be in like Breaking Bad. Like there's just so many different. Um, the funny thing is every, I have really small hands. Right? So it's hard to buy gloves. Can I touch these? Yeah. They're, it's empty. <laughs> and these There's are so an extra space. small. But it's hard because you want to be able to, like, have good control uh, of your hands. Oh, my God. And then when you have short gloves, you get water in them. So Ooh. every time I have ordered gloves, they've gotten progressively longer. And this time I was like, Michael, I found gloves that go up over my elbow. <laughs> that's <laughs> and so he smart. was like, okay, if that's what you need. Okay, so why do you have the ties on the yarn? So, because of things like this, this is actually a perfect example. So I have the ties on the yarn, so it's easier to pick them up, manipulate that, and keep the skein straight without mm -hmm. getting twisted, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, and you've wound yarn and then it starts going the wrong way because yarn isn't all yep. laid out the same direction. Um, and then it just makes it a little easier to manipulate and do 
what I need to do with it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get citric acid in my eyeball. Okay. I was going to say, it's also not toxic. It's food grade citric acid, but you probably don't want it in your eyes. Um, <laughs> it's called it. It's called acid. So the, the citric acid is in food. Taste it. Yeah. That, look, it's used Lick for the sour. Skin? It's used for sour candy. There it is right there. You can read the back of it. Um, okay. So we're going to throw out, we do, sorry, I'm not used to having a film crew. <laughs> um, three skeins per pan, like I said. The way I lay it out, you're only getting one side of the skein, so we're going to have to flip it later to speckle the other side to make sure it's even. Have you ever gotten a skein, Kent, and you know when you pull from the, like, two at a time socks or something, you pull from the inside to the outside and then they're very different so I this have. helps <laughs> avoid to that not a little wolf knit skein <laughs> <laughs> okay oh sorry she's gotta I'm get gonna... another skein out so i'm gonna get another skein okay and the base that we're dying on is your sunfish, sunfish mm -hmm. which is 75 25 fingering, fingering weight yep exactly merino yep super wash merino 75 percent. i have a question for you what are what do you want me to make for you with oh. this? Oh, a baseball glove. <laughs> a baseball glove. Interesting. Interesting. Um, do you want another muscle bro hat? Oh god. Uh, see, so this is gets Look all at tangled. This. It, oh no, it's better ah! now. Yeah, it looked bad, but it looked like a knot, but it wasn't a knot. It isn't. You just gotta let it go through. Now, how long were you soaking these for? How long was I soaking them or how long do you need to soak them? <laughs> we soaked them for longer than we needed to. Because Originally, we, we were going to film this yesterday, but then we had a lazy day. We had a lazy day. We had a lazy bone. A much needed lazy day. Mm -hmm. um, so you really only need to soak it, I don't know, as long as it's saturated. So I think some people say like 15, 20 minutes. I will usually soak it at least an hour. Yeah, 15, 20 minutes isn't really. No. Especially when you have a full, like maybe if you have one singular skein, it'll mm -hmm. be saturated. But I usually am soaking it the night before. And then Michael is helping me prep. So then in the morning I could just come die. But if I'm doing it same day, at least an hour, because I will prep all the yarn, turn on the oven. The oven needs time to heat up. So then it's like a nice buffer. Cool. Okay, so, so that pan's ready. So we're going to turn this on, honestly... I don't really know what the degrees are on this thing. It's kind of just like a, you know, when you have a baker who like is like, I don't measure things and you're like, baking is science. What are you doing? But they're like, yeah, it's fine. Like, I just know they how to do, do it. They do it a lot. Like, I know what it's supposed to look like. You already have the knowledge. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. And I don't think if anyone else has a different like, oh, turn into a three or four. Like, I don't think that is <laughs> transferable across dye thingies. Um, but we're gonna let this heat up a little bit because yarn is fiber and it has follicles. It doesn't have follicles, it has scales like our hair. So when you heat it up, it opens the pores. It makes it more porous so that it can absorb color and then you let it cool down because then it closes and traps the color in. So we're gonna heat it up a little bit and then we will, sorry. Should have had you sign a waiver. Got a little no. <laughs> gas on me. It's, it's the uh, risks. What, what is what was the word I was gonna say? Of dying, being in a dye studio. Whatever. Lay that out. That we're gonna use. It's gonna be pretty bare today if we only use it for one pan. Um. So wait, you do something kind of cool with your sock bling. So yes. like, how do you um use them? normally when you're dying. Yes, so similar to what I'll do today, but I'll use it for a full dye day, so it'll have a lot more saturation. So my sock blanks, I know some people dye like their colorways on sock blanks, and mm -hmm. then you could just use them. I use my sock blanks, they're called one of, one of a kind, no waste sock blanks, so I use them while I'm dying to minimize waste in the dye process. So whether it's cleaning my gloves, wiping off my gloves, um, cleaning my measuring, a spoon, my actual stirrer, whatever I'm using, it'll clean things off. Um, if I have 
leftover dye that I'm like, oh, I don't need this. Instead of dumping it down the drain, it'll go in here. Again, just to minimize how much dye yeah. residue or like chemicals are going into the water here. Um, and then I sell them. And it's pretty fun because you never know what it's going to look like. It, everyone is different depending on what I'm dyeing that day. But sometimes you can tell like, oh, I was dyeing this collection that day. <laughs> like my, I have one in there. I'll show you. That's like when I was doing my tailgate party colorways nice. and you can see the entire you're like oh this like palette is very cohesive and it's cool to That's see on a cool. spackling. Yeah. yeah what I saw you doing the other day is you were like you were spackling so you were like sprinkling mm -hmm. and then you would go over and yep. you'd like wipe your hands on exactly. it. Exactly. Well, so you'll so see that. Can we go see some of those the sock blanks while these are like yeah. sitting? Mm -hmm. Okay let's go see them. For sure. Okay so you can see here's one from actually you could see this one is what I used while this was on the rack so it's kind of funny you can see there are a lot of red speckles so mm -hmm. there's some red here there's some black there's some brown um some of this amethyst that you were talking about um That's so you cool. can kind of see it right this sort of teal probably came so from cleaning you, this off are you just using this until there's like almost no blank space and then you're like all right that one's that's good. what i've been doing mm -hmm. some of my earlier ones um i would just use like one oh, yeah, for the day so that i was using so it's like pretty um, there's a lot of natural space, which is really cool. And have you seen sock blanks tied up? Get all of that over here, Kent. Look how cool that is. The way that they work, mm -hmm. you can move this. Um, so when I, when you order from you, do you just like close your eyes <laughs> and like select one? So some are numbered. So some oh. of the beginning ones I used to number, take pictures of, mm -hmm. and then people could like actually select what they wanted. Mm -hmm. Now I've done them as a mystery, which I think is a lot more fun. So, fun. so I will either, if it's someone I know, so like Kay, Crazy Sock Lady ordered one, and I was like, oh, this one has like all these wines and like. She loves them. Yes, color. like cranberry, <laughs> like burgundy colors that like reminded me of her. So I will take that. Sometimes people will request, mm -hmm. um, like MC used two of them to helically knit. Uh, a skirt that she was testing oh. for me. So, so not just for socks. No, though. you could use them for anything. And she was like, can you give me two that would look good together? So mm -hmm. we were like playing around. They were like more saturated ones like this. Oh, wait, um, how did this one, be <laughs> how is this one a leftover? So this like one is a leftover because I maybe was testing colors. See how it's like purple. There's actually a lot of color yeah, underneath this. Yeah, I can see this. other colors, but it's very So saturated. probably what happened is I spilled mm -hmm. a container that had navy in it. And then I was like, well, now I need to remake this because it doesn't have the exact amount of dye that I need in it. You know what I mean? So and I so was like, like, let me scratch out. this and start over. So soft. Um, or when I was making like advents, sometimes mm -hmm. that happens because I'm not saving things for like recipes. So I'll be like, oh, I'm going to stop adding this. And then I'll just add a bunch of colors and I ended up cool. looking blue. So, um, this yarn, is it the same as your yep. sunfish? Mm -hmm. And it's, then it's like 100 grams, right? Yeah. It's kind of like just yeah. a skein of soft yep. yarn. Yep, it is okay, a full cool. skein, so 463 yards. So this one, again, not as saturated, but I probably had some orange and was like, oh, let me just throw it in That's there. so cool. This was actually probably a mix of different dyes. I feel like you were the person who told me that you like having sock blanks because when you need to... <laughs> Like if you're like last mm -hmm. minute going somewhere mm -hmm. to the movies or on a road trip, you yep. just grab it and you can start a project. Like yep. start a hat or a pair of socks or something. Yep. You no need to wind. Yes, it's exactly. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what people like having skeins of like commercial sock yarn, like Definitely. a Reggie or something. And I don't, but I'm like, it feels like it serves the same so cool. sort of purpose. And then I, I don't know, it's cool. And so sometimes if people order and I don't know, I'll be like, oh, what kind of matches their order? Like they got a really... Like, oh, this was their order. I'm like, well, clearly they like orange. So let me like pick one that's like autumnal and orangey. Cool. Or if they're like, oh, one that's like super bright and pops, I'm going to be like, oh, let me pick one that has like a lot of like neon -y. Yeah. Like this. I was probably dying Calavetas mm -hmm. when I, the one I showed you upstairs that has all the speckles. Cool. Um, yeah. So those are in here. I think they're fun. Is if it's fairly saturated, we could do this two different ways. We can really saturate it, and as soon as you apply it, if you like press it down, it'll like kind of bleed out and get like watercolor. So, like that one that I showed you that has like different shades of blue, or you can just pour it and not touch it at all, and then it'll be like very fixed, not watercolor.
So since Brianna and Ken both have on respirators <laughs> so that they don't get <laughs> so that they don't get uh, any kind of uh, particles in their Rainbow lungs. <laughs> What's it called? Rainbow lung. Rainbow lung. That's really that a cute name for something that sounds terrible. Um, but I'll explain what's going on right now. So um, Brianna got her dye notebook out so she can be ready to write down everything in case, you know, everyone's just gonna love this uh, Texas Rangers color and all the Texas Rangers fans are gonna order this. There's 8 million people in Dallas, Ken says. Really like our country. <laughs> Very patriotic. It could be patriotic. I think it's gonna be nice. I'm not usually a red, white, and blue person. But I think with the way that we're approaching this, it's going to be good. I think it'll be a perfect 4th of July color. Perfect 4th of July color. Okay. So uh, Brianna's putting... Can't, can't, can't. Can. Let's, let's, let's... Uh... <laughs> Kit's not very coordinated. Let's not let him pick anything up. So we're going to test this. Okay, so they're testing things out. So I'm going to come in close so I can Remember, see. Remember, this is always going to be like... Well, that's right? Because you put... But that's like the type of blue it'll be. I think we go darker than this. Okay. Sorry, is that too bad? No. So I'll use this to clean it when there's actual dye on it. Mm -hmm. This just dries it. So when I put that in there. All right, so the first go is a little too light. So now we're adding some more. Which is really, you shouldn't add dry powdered water to me. Now, ready? Oh. Oh, it's a very tiny texture. So if I add powder to water after, or just like certain dyes are really hard. Is that a blend? Oh, what's it called? An immersion? Uh, what's it it's called? A frother. A frother. So mm -hmm. you're you're frothing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, second try here of the blue. See how much darker it is. Let's go in and see how it looks. Better. Yeah. It'll be a little darker. Pretty. Right, because it's actually absorbing, not just like touching it. So double saturation. So I think that's good for blue. So I have to take off and do a Zoom meeting. So I'm gonna leave them with a tripod. <laughs> and then we're gonna come back down in a little bit and see what they come up with.
back, and I haven't seen the colorway yet. So you miss see. Kent Speckling. Oh well, then Come you should see. open it. Oh okay. Come closer. Ready? Oh god! I was gonna say, be careful. Just put it over <laughs> the sink. Oh okay. Actually, this is much better than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not a red, white, and blue fan. Wow, that's pretty cool. So, where did all the water go? Do you put a lot of water in yours? No. It's We're speckling. No, that's okay. so cool. No. Okay, so... So that's why the speckles stay sharper. Oh. Like, if you notice... So it's suspended in water. Yes. Yeah. That's cool. I like it. Okay. So, what's, what happens next? So you wait for it to cool. So it's still like pretty warm. You, okay. I mean, you could touch it. It's like not that warm. It's like 70 degrees. Yeah. We're a little warmer than room temperature. Mm -hmm. um, don't get dye on your hands. Um, so wait for it to cool mm -hmm. fully. If mm -hmm. you rinse it before it's fully cooled, it'll bleed. Oh, okay. Right? That's why you use like cold water mm -hmm. when you rinse block things. So wait for it to cool. We'll take the lid off now. I left the lid on to keep the suspense, but we'll take the lid off so that it cools Let a bit cool. more. And we'll do the same with this. Okay. Hot. It's not that hot. <laughs> that one but... was like sitting on the thing. Yeah. So we'll do that. Jeez. This will cool down. And then you have to rinse it. Do you rinse it and do you wash it too with soap? Yes. Well, you rinse it with soap. Rinse it with soap. Well, I don't mm -hmm. know if you're like, did a water rinse and then yeah. did a soap nope. rinse. Nope. One Interesting. Rinse. One rinse. And then we'll you have a video my of the final thing. Proprietary wool wash that I found that I won't tell anyone what it is. Just kidding. But I like found this randomly and I really like the way it smells. Oh yeah. It's like mint mint. Mm -hmm. It's what is that? Lavender citrus. Oh. It's the lavender then. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like But I don't like lavender. Usually, but I found this and I like it. Okay, Kent, what do you think? Am I in the way? It's a real home run. <laughs> <laughs> that was not even funny, Brianna. Don't give him the satisfaction. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> so you like it? I know we gave you a little preview of what the colorway looks like, but I have it here dry and skeined, although this is me skeining it up by hand, so don't judge the skein. But here is what it turned out. Hold on, there we go. So it's got a lot of blue on it, blue and blue speckles, and then we've got red speckles, and just the littlest bit of that yellowy gold for the the number that goes around there, I think it was, what I can't say, like the first, I think it was like their first uniform in the next season, they get to have gold around their number. So I think it looks pretty cool. Honestly, this is the first blue and red that I don't just totally hate. My camera is not wanting to behave right now. There we go. So I'm excited to get this knit up. I'm going to hopefully be knitting up a start of something in the next week or so. And then the sock blank came out a little bit crazier because a lot more yellow got on it. 
I know somebody is probably loving this. These are not my colors, but they are very like primary and bold. Let's see if I can get a little more focus on it. So that will be something really fun. This I'm definitely planning to use in some sort of giveaway. So I don't know if it will be with my membership or on here. So stay tuned for that. Now, if you are a fan of this color, whether you are a Texas Rangers fan or not, um, it is now available on the Little Wolf Knits website today. So I will link that down below. It's going to be a pre-order um, and will be uh, open through the end of November. So just a small window. So if you are a fan of it, make sure to grab a skein while you can. Uh, this was fun. I honestly want to go... <laughs> I want to go back and get into Bree's Dye Studio again soon. I think I didn't get to really be a big part of this um, dye experience. So I, uh, but I was kind of like enjoying getting to see how all of it went. Bree and I did a color way together for my members earlier this year, back in January. I guess it's been almost a year. And it's always fascinating just how much work goes into that dyeing process and how much expertise you have to have to understand how colors are going to go together. Um, Brie gave a lot of guidance when we, we were working on this colorway and I think it turned out to be something really beautiful. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching this uh, different <laughs> vlog episode for us. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.